On the 17th of June 2022, China launched its third aircraft carrier, the Fujian, also known as the Type 003. The Fujian is the first Chinese carrier to be built on a fully domestic design. The previous two carriers, the Liaoning and the Shandong, are distant cousins of the Russian Admiral Kuznetsov class carrier, albeit with heavy improvements and modifications. The Fujian is the first Chinese carrier to use aircraft catapults to launch fixed wing aircraft into the air. This allows a heavier takeoff weight and a higher sortie rate than China's previous carriers. The carrier is only one part of a carrier strike group. It is without a doubt the most important vessel, but far from the only one. This video discusses the composition of the future Fujian carrier strike group. At the center of the force is the Fujian aircraft carrier, right in the middle of the task force for maximum safety. The Fujian is expected to have an air wing of 70 aircraft, including about 50 fixed wing fighters. Before the J-35 fifth generation fighter becomes available, the Fujian will rely on the J-15 as an interim solution. The Fujian will deploy the J-15B, which is compatible with catapult launch. The J-15B is far more lethal than the original J-15, as they are armed with the PL-15 beyond visual range missile that are more powerful than the previous PL-12. Once the J-35 enters service, the Fujian will carry a mix of the J-35 and the J-15. The J-35, being a fifth generation fighter, will have a high level of stealth. However, to maintain the stealth, the J-35 will have to carry missiles inside its internal weapon bay. Carrying large weapons on the external hardpoint may compromise the stealth of the J-35. So we should expect the J-35 to be focused on air-to-air -air warfare. The J-15, on the other hand, are non-stealthy by default, so it will have no problem with carrying weapons on the external hardpoint. The J-15 is therefore more suited to carry large weapons, such as anti-ship missiles, to fulfill more of a strike role and anti-ship role. The Fujian will also field the KJ-500 Airborne Early Warning and Control System, around five of these. Lastly, there will be around a dozen helicopters, mostly the Z-18, for anti-submarine warfare and search and rescue missions. An aircraft carrier is extremely valuable, and without protection, a carrier is extremely vulnerable. That's why aircraft carriers never leave home alone. They are always escorted by an extensive flotilla of other ships, which we shall talk about. And to switch things up a little, we will start with the underwater assets of the carrier force, the nuclear-powered attack submarines. The Fujian will likely be accompanied by two Type 093A or B attack submarines. They are among the most capable Chinese nuclear-powered attack submarines, or SSNs. They will be deployed ahead of the main force as scouts, one could say. In essence, they are a stealthy pickets force. This is a role they excel at with their high speed and stealth. But hold on, you ask, why use SSN as scouts? Why not use a surface warship? Well, the scouting ships ahead of the main force is naturally the most vulnerable, because they are the ones who will run into the enemy first. Surface warships, if isolated, may well be in danger. A submarine is more suitable because it can try to stay hidden before supports arrive. The main job of the submarine is to detect and destroy enemy submarines, who may try to attack the carrier strike group. A friendly submarine is actually one of the best assets to go after opposing subs. Sure, surface warships and helicopters can look for hostile submarines as well, but their search capability can be quite limited. 
if the hostile sub decides to submerge to a deeper layer of the ocean, for example the thermocline, surface warships will generally have a difficult time finding them. However, a friendly submarine can dive to the same layer of the ocean to find and destroy the hostile submarine. So submarine scouts are pretty much indispensable in a carrier force. Once the Type 095 SSN enters service, it will gradually replace the Type 093 SSN as the main scout of the carrier force. The most capable surface warship in the entire group is the Type 055 Large Destroyer. In my opinion, they are the world's most advanced and most powerful surface combatants. The Liaoning Carrier Group in 2022 has frequently been sighted with two Type 055 destroyers, in addition to the other smaller destroyers. It is likely the Fujian Carrier Group will have two Type 055 destroyers as well. The Type 055 has 112 universal VLS. They can carry long-range surface-to-air missiles, which can down hostile aircraft from hundreds of miles away. They can intercept incoming missiles, even those flying at sea-skimming altitude. The Type 055's powerful Dragon Eye radar can track hundreds of airborne targets simultaneously. In addition to air targets, the Type 055 can support anti-submarine operations with their helicopters, either the Z-20 or the Z-18. The smaller cousin of the 055, the Type 052D destroyer, basically performs the same defensive mission for the carrier force, albeit with a much lower level of firepower. The Type 052D has only 64 VLS cells, far less than the 112 on the 055. The Fujian Carrier Strike Group should have somewhere between 2 to 4 Type 052D destroyers. The overall number of destroyers in the Fujian Carrier Force will be similar to the overall number of destroyers and cruisers in a US Carrier Strike Group or between 4 to 6. The Type 055 would likely serve as the main air defense command and control center for the carrier force, much like the Ticonderoga class cruisers of the US Navy. The Super Destroyer can relay instructions and target information to the smaller ships, such as the Type 052D. Both the Type 055 and the 052D are the defenders of the Fujian aircraft carrier. However, Chinese destroyers serve an offensive role as well, unlike their US counterparts which are purely defensive. Chinese destroyers have powerful anti-ship missiles. Their standard weapon is the YJ-18 anti-ship cruise missile. They also have the YJ-21 anti-ship ballistic missile. The YJ-21 has a massive reach and a hypersonic speed, making them very hard to defend against using typical anti-missile defenses on board naval ships. Chinese destroyers make a key contribution to the offensive firepower of the Fujian carrier force especially before the J-35 carrier fighter becomes available to wrestle control of the surrounding airspace away from Western forces. There shall be around three Type 054A frigates. They serve in the anti-submarine role for the most part. Their job is to scan the waters around the carrier for submarine threats. To do this, they will use both their passive sonar which is a towed array sonar, and their active sonar. Contrary to popular belief, active sonars are widely used by surface warships in a naval task force. This includes during the Cold War. A large carrier force will be heard by submarines anyway, so there is less hesitation to use active sonar. 
Don't get me wrong, the submarines within the carrier force will not use active sonars very much at all, but the surface warships will be much more inclined to do so. The Type 054A will be gradually replaced with the Type 054B frigate as the latter become available. We have the Type 901 Fast Combat Support Ship, the PLA Navy's primary blue water resupply ship. Their main role is to enable underway replenishment. This extends the range and the endurance of the carrier force. They are very large, at 45,000 tons, similar to the supply class of the US Navy. They carry copious amounts of fuel, ammunition, fresh water, food, and other supplies to replenish depleted stocks on the combat vessels. However, as with most replenishment ships, the Type 901 at 25 knots is the slowest in the carrier force. So every other ship in the carrier group has to travel at the speed of the slowest vessel, the Type 901. The Fujian carrier is a powerful tool for power projection far away from the Chinese coast. However, its combat effectiveness depends on many different units working together in a single force. Together, they achieve synergy. This includes the Type 093 submarines for scouting and submarine hunting, the air warfare destroyers for air defense, the Type 054A frigates for anti-submarine warfare, and the Type 901 supply ship for underway replenishment. The Fujian carrier itself provides air cover for the whole fleet. In the Fujian carrier group, every single ship plays an important role. The survival of the task force and the success of the mission depend on everybody doing their duty. To see how the Fujian compares with the Ford class supercarriers of the US Navy, please watch this video right here.